Hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and welcome back once again to Ballymoon Castle where this morning there is a definite change to the landscape and that is because we are at last into late summer uh, which is of course signalling the beginning of the harvest season uh, though it has to be said that not all fields are as close to harvesting as some of the others. Uh, so let's actually take a look at the map and see how things are looking. Uh, so basically we are in a good position because our fields were planted out a little bit earlier and have actually reached full maturity. Uh, now over the weekend I was doing a little bit of reading up on seasons and sort of figuring out what has been going on. A lot of the stuff that I found out is of course stuff that I knew before and had just forgotten, uh, but I have actually learned a few new things as well, so that is always good. Um, so basically I have been struggling with uh, fertilization on some of the fields, in particular field number 25 where our biofuel willow is, and it turns out that uh, much like real life, fertilizer can only really be applied in the very earliest growing stages. Uh, so I think that is what was going on up there. Uh, the other thing that was kind of bothering me was of course the various harvest states and it turns out for the field crops they only actually get to the first harvest state and then they are completely ready to go. Uh, grass is of course the exception to that uh, because as you can see we see here uh, we have two uh, very distinct harvest states. Uh, the other thing that I have uh, been looking at is of course the Wapster tool which is actually a lot more valuable than I had initially thought it was. Uh, so obviously in real life farming, farmers uh, will head out to their fields to actually have a look at what is going on on the field uh, with their crop and uh, we can do the same. Uh, so giving a quick scan to the field uh, reveals a lot of useful information uh, to us. First off, we have a position uh, on the map and we also have a ele an elevation measurement above sea level. Now uh, this really doesn't affect anything in this version of the mod, but I think in future versions, uh, because it is due to come to FS19, uh, it basically I think it will be a case that uh, low-lying fields will dry out a little bit more slowly and uh, by drying out I of course mean the uh, soil moisture content which is this number down here. Currently we are at 10%. Now I think in this version of Seasons it doesn't really affect the crops or the quality of the soil or compaction or fertilization or anything like that. But one thing it does affect is traction on the field and I think a couple of episodes ago I was struggling with controlling the Massey uh, that was sliding around and I think that it was to do with this. At the time I think I was blaming the keyboard steer mod uh, for causing the sort of slippage uh, but I do think that ultimately it was the fact that the ground was wet and I was driving a little bit too fast. Uh, directly above that we have the level of fertility that we have in the soil so we were lucky enough to be able to get 100% fertilization on this field and the rest of these things basically relate to the crop so obviously we are growing canola or oilseed rape and it is 100% grown which means that it is ready to harvest. Now unlike the base game uh, this thing here plays a huge role. This is crop moisture and it's something that I think has been throwing out a lot of what I've been thinking recently. Basically the lower the moisture content is once you've reached a harvestability state uh, the better your yield is going to be. Uh, so we are obviously at 8% at the moment. It has been pretty dry over the last couple of days. It is a case that if it were to rain today uh, this would go up to 25% where the actual moisture, crop moisture is capped and we will get the wet fields icon. And then based on the season, the air temperature and the time of day the crop will gradually start to dry out and we will lose the wet crops icon but the crop's moisture may still be a little bit high uh, which will reduce our yields so it might be a case that we would want to wait until it comes down a little bit more. Uh, so yeah I have learned a lot there and I think I will be using the Wapster a lot more from now on. So our crop fields are ready to go, this field and the wheat field are ready to be harvested, uh, but that is not going to be a job for today. 
Uh, so autumn is just around the corner and in seasons it is a lot wetter than the others. Uh, so in typical fashion, uh, we see that we are getting four out of the six days uh, with rain forecast. And that has basically informed me as to what I am going to be doing uh, over the next couple of days, getting this farm ready for winter. Uh, so it seems that the second day of autumn is going to be pretty wet. And so what I've decided to do is to set that aside uh, to get the cattle in. Uh, now, I think at the start of the series, I was kind of planning on doing that in the winter. Um, but obviously, there is a benefit to having them in a little bit earlier because we will be producing uh, a lot more manure and slurry that we can use for fertilizing our fields later. And we're also going to be earning uh, some extra income from the milk that they produce. And so I have kind of decided to start doing that kind of work on Sunday, which is the second day of autumn. And in order to do that, uh, we are going to have to have a look at getting some food stuff in for them. Uh, now, I think at the start of the series, I said that I was not going to mow grass and feed it to the animals. Uh, I have since changed my mind on that. Now, while the season's mod uh, does kind of model seasonal variations in how much food the animals need, uh, it is a case that it doesn't actually model anything with regard to them being able to graze. So what I've decided to do is to set aside this grass field here, a uh, sort of grazing room for the animals. Uh, later on, I'm going to come up and do a little bit of fencing up here just to kind of role play the thing a little bit better. Uh, but off camera and in a practical sense, what I'm going to end up doing is as soon as the cows arrive, I am going to mow this area and store it in one of the silos so that it doesn't rot. And I am basically going to simulate off camera, I suppose, uh, grazing on this field. Uh, obviously, when winter comes in, it is going to be a case that the grass is going to die off and there won't be any grazing. And so I'm going to go in and edit my save file and take grass out of the silo and out of their feeding troughs. And I think that actually works out a little bit better than what I was trying to do before. Uh, I think I am just going to ignore the sheep and basically keep feeding them uh, hay. Uh, since we are going to be cutting their numbers back quite a bit over the next couple of days. So yeah, that is probably going to start happening once the cattle arrive. Uh, other than that, we also need to get some other food sorted out, uh, especially the power food. So we have got plenty of hay for them, uh, which we do need. And we also need a little bit of silage, which is what we are going to be doing today. And the final thing that we need for the cattle is obviously some straw in order for them to produce manure. So we're going to have to give them some bedding. And uh, obviously this wheat field is where that straw is going to come from. Maybe a case that we will have to buy in some uh, over the course of the winter, but I think the bulk of it will come out of this. I'm just actually going to check out of curiosity how this field is doing. Yeah, so it's pretty much the same as the canola field, other than the fact that we are sowing wheat, so 100% uh, on growth and fertility. So we should get a decent yield out of that. Um, I do have some equipment that I need to pick up down at the shop this morning as well, um, because we are obviously going mowing for silage. Uh, I have also purchased some equipment overnight, which is sitting in the field. And so, yeah, a couple of pieces of equipment got sold off last night in order to cover the running costs and also the cost of the brand new equipment. And the first for the shop was the grain trailer that came with the farm. And that's basically because the new trailer that I have bought for the farm uh, is very practical and useful indeed. Uh, because if we hit the Z key, I think, yeah. Uh, we can basically change the capacity of it, which is what we will be using uh, for the silaging today. Uh, but we can also pick up grain in that. And the total volume it can hold is equivalent to uh, what the original farm tech grain trainer can hold. So uh, we're not really losing any capacity. And because we have such small fields, uh, it's not really worth having uh, two trailers knocking about the place. Uh, so that was sold off uh, pretty quickly. The second piece of equipment that I actually sold off was our fertilizer sprayer. As I say, we can only apply fertilizer in the very early stages, 
of growth and our fields have been 100% fertilized and are actually ready to harvest at the moment. Uh, so it's not a thing that we are going to need it knocking about on the farm and uh, basically uh, costing us money in maintenance fees. Uh, so it has been sold off. There's another couple of reasons that I wanted to get rid of it. Um, basically, uh, on the fields we have, it is the booms make it kind of difficult to uh, maneuver in the tighter corners, and I end up getting hung up on trees and having to fold and unfold the machine uh, just to get around the field. And as I say, it is a bit big for the fields, but it's also kind of small uh, in terms of its spreading area. So if it is a case that the manure and slurry we produce uh, over winter, well, autumn and winter, uh, are not enough to cover the fields uh, next year, we will more than likely hire one of the solid fertilizer spreaders, uh, which have uh, a much wider... Um, a spreading area and are also a little more convenient for turning on these kind of slightly narrow fields that we have. So yeah that is the basic plan uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, so today we are going to silage and get that small field up here. There are a couple of jobs I want to do with the placeables. Um, sort out that greenhouse and uh, do a little bit of role playing up here and put out some fencing to fence in that pasture for the cattle and aside from that I think that's going to be today's work and tomorrow we are getting the harvester in so we're going to be uh, dealing with the uh, two grain fields and on Saturday which is the first day of autumn uh, the rest of the grass should have regrown and I think that at that stage we are going to be doing the massive silage harvest. So anyway, I am going to head down to the field and get myself set up for mowing this morning and we are going to take a look at the brand new piece of hardware that I have picked up for the farm overnight. And so back down at the field I've picked up all the equipment that we're going to need for today and I've just done a quick scan of the large hay meadow that we have here and it turns out that we actually have 33% uh, fertilization on this soil. Uh, I don't think Seasons even allows us to fertilize uh, natural grass fields. I think we would have to plow. So it's interesting that that is popping up, uh, but it is. Uh, we can see that the growth is at 67%. Uh, so technically I could actually start mowing this today um, but I'd rather wait until it is fully grown and harvest it uh, on a Saturday as I had planned. Um, so this is basically the new mowing setup that I am going with. Uh, I have traded in the side sling mower and I am currently leasing uh, these butterfly mowers. Hopefully I will be able to afford to purchase them for the farm at some point. Uh, so this basically gives us a 9 meter working width which works very well with the tether and also the wind roar so that I can basically uh, mow and ted or in the case of today's work mow and row uh, in one pass with the tractors. Uh, so I suppose without further ado it is time to take a look at our new piece of kit uh, which comes to us from uh, Black Sheep Modding's uh, Massey Ferguson Generation Pack and I've actually bought two pieces of equipment from that. Um, so obviously we have the Massey Ferguson 675 um, which is a two-wheel drive tractor I've gone for the version with the cab and I haven't actually uh, bothered to customize it in any way except for uh, purchasing that little warning triangle there which I think kind of makes it. Uh, now the modeling on this is absolutely incredible and while the machine isn't all that powerful I think it tops out at 69 horsepower. Uh, it is more than capable of uh, running the wind rower and I'm assuming the tether though I haven't actually tried it on it yet. Um, it is a case that I am going to be testing it out on the wind rower this morning uh, to see how it can uh, keep up with the vent. Uh, so let us jump in and have a little look at this tractor. Uh, so obviously we can open and close the door which is a kind of a nice touch and the uh, window 
uh, also opens and closes. Uh, we'll just leave it a little bit open. It does kind of glitch through the warning triangle, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, though I'm assuming that would kind of happen in real life too. You might only be able to open the window ever so slightly. Uh, so we're just going to leave it slightly open and uh, close up the door as well. Uh, we don't want to rip that off while we are going along. Uh, so let's start up and we are going to connect ourselves onto the wind rower. And as I say, though whoa, though this tractor is slightly underpowered for this, I don't think it's going to have any trouble in pulling it, though it might do it a little bit more slowly than if we were to put it onto the slightly newer tractors. Uh, so we're just going to back ourselves in there roughly. Uh, that'll pretty much do. We're going to connect it on and obviously hook up the PTO. So, um, with the Fent, this uh, mowing system actually suits it very well, and uh, when we get down to the field, uh, we will have a look at that. So let me just jump in, I'm gonna close the door, and we'll just swing around and get the Massey to actually follow us down to this uh, rather small and hard to access field. So we're just going to pop him on, follow me, and hopefully he will be able to follow us down. So, um, uh, I actually don't know if I was aware of this when I bought the tractor, uh, but it turns out that we can actually uh, flip the console around and drive it in reverse, which makes uh, the whole mowing procedure a hell of a lot easier. I'm just actually going to uh, zip out and... Um, actually set ourselves up for mowing. Uh, so let's unfold this mower. And we're going to unfold the front mower. And then we can basically start switching these implements on. And I'm just going to take a little bit of lead uh, to allow a little bit of space for the Massey. So let's see if he has any more luck uh, coming into the field than we do. It is a slightly smaller tractor. And yeah, he was able to get his way in here pretty easily. Uh, so I do actually have to switch back to him, unfortunately, to uh, unfold the tool and get it started up. So uh, we're just going to unfold that. start it off and we are just going to get him sort of lined up behind the tractor I actually have to no I don't think I have to take him off follow me I think he will just sort of line himself up with us here uh, no he has failed completely I'm not entirely sure what he is up to but for some reason he has driven into the hedge uh, let's see how this works Yeah, that's actually going pretty well. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is basically take out uh, three or four headlands and then I will probably uh, come back to you once that is done.
And so that is our first four headlands done. Uh, admittedly the Fent does struggle a little bit at the top of the hill, uh, but it has gone pretty well so far. So what I'm going to do now is actually uh, stop the worker, uh, because I don't want him messing up the windrows and he's actually uh, come just a little bit too close to me there uh, because I don't want him messing up the windrows on the headland so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to just pull this machine aside for a moment and uh, continue on mowing the rest of the field and then I will jump into this and uh, do a little bit of rowing up myself uh, so that we get a little bit of time uh, to show off this tractor in action. there we have it the grass is mown and rolled up uh, I probably could have done a slightly neater job on it and I possibly could try to combine some of these rows uh, just to make the grass a little bit easier to see when I am actually going to pick it up uh, but I think that is good enough for now uh, so I think it's time to change over machines and uh, basically start picking up this grass Yep, and once again the uh, smaller equipment has proven itself uh, to be very useful on these small fields. Uh, it's really less of a struggle to actually get into this field uh, using this equipment uh, when compared with the Fent. Uh, so I am basically going to line myself up here. Uh, I will be driving the Forager for now and uh, having the other Massey follow along beside us using Follow Me. Uh, and basically filling up the trailer that way. Uh, so I am going to get myself set up behind him and I'm gonna set an offset somewhere in the region of about six meters, which I think seems to work best. And we can actually jump back to this tractor now and uh, slowly pull him along side. Just give him plenty of time to get lined up. Distance between five meters, zero. So he should try to keep level with us at this point. Uh, let's get the pipe out. And we're going to start up. And ever so carefully, uh, move off and begin picking up this grass. And 
yeah, that actually seems to be working pretty well so far. So I think it is time for another time lapse while I get this uh, grass picked up and we're going to take it down to the farm and uh, get it into one of those silage pits. Uh, no doubt I will end up missing a little bit of grass here and there, uh, but it is not the end of the world uh, since we are going to hopefully uh, have no end of silage this season. So I have absolutely no idea how much of that I have actually included uh, because it has been a hell of a job. It has been a lot of fun uh, working with the two tractors like this, but it has taken uh, longer than I was expecting or hoping it to. Uh, to be honest, I wanted to be off this field by about two o'clock and okay, so I mean we're not uh, hugely off that mark. but. Uh, it is a case that it is pretty late in the day, uh, so I am actually debating uh, if I am going to use this system on the slightly larger fields or not. Um, we have missed a couple of bits here and there, uh, but it's not really anything to kind of write home about, and I think that I am going to call that done. Uh, so... What we have to do now is basically get all of this equipment uh, down to the farm. Uh, I have got the moors, of course, to uh, return as well. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is uh, sort all the equipment out, get it back to the farm, and uh, meet up with you back at the silo and have a look at what we managed to get done today. So a little bit of time has passed and I have been busy leveling up this silo and getting it compacted and it is just hitting 100% now so I think it is time uh, to blanket that and get it fermenting for the cattle. Uh, so I think we just go in and press R and there we go, the silo is covered and it is fermenting. It's not a huge amount uh, for this bunker to be honest, but it is uh, probably actually going to be more than enough to feed the cattle for a while. Uh, a couple of bits of grass didn't actually get converted into chaff and so they've kind of spilled around here. Uh, I may get the front loader and get them picked up and dumped into this silo over here uh, because I don't think chaff is actually affected by the weather. Uh, so yes, um, as I say, I have been up to the sheep and they are doing absolutely fantastic. Well, as well as they normally do anyway. 
Uh, their health is up to 68, which is brilliant. And we've got another pallet of wool almost full. I think that's going to be the second one up there. And as you can see, they are okay for everything else. Uh, the Massey has proven its worth on the farm today. It has done legion work. And I am absolutely thrilled that I have a machine like this on the farm uh, because it is very much in keeping with the map. Uh, I've also done a little bit of a tidy up around the yard. Granted, I don't have a lot of equipment, but I do have a habit of leaving things uh, sort of lying around and it makes maneuvering a little bit difficult when you have machines dumped uh, basically everywhere. Uh, there is one other job that I wanted to get done today. Well, there were actually two jobs. Uh, but it's a case that I think we are running out of time in this episode. Uh, so I am going to take the water bowser, which I brought down from the sheep farm, uh, over to this greenhouse and see if we can get it producing something before the season is out. I think the graveling over here is going to actually be something that we will have to put on the long finger. I did want to make something of an entrance over here uh, just to see if I could make things look a little bit neater. Um, so if we back up and I think strangely it's R we have to press uh, in order to get that to actually work. And it is actually taking quite a bit of water but it will hopefully uh, end up paying for itself in the long run. So let's get in and have a look at what is going on in here. So our crop has been planted and is starting to grow. I think this one actually grows cucumbers. So that is going to be interesting to see how it progresses and whether we actually end up making any money out of this uh, without the manure. Uh, we actually cannot buy manure on the map. So it is a case that we are going to have to wait for the cattle to come in order to get that. So uh, basically, I think that is everything for this episode. I think early in the next episode, I will uh, probably get a little bit of fencing done up here. Uh, we have got a combine on the way, which is uh, going to be arriving uh, sometime tomorrow morning so that we can start the harvest. And hopefully I'll get a bit of the fencing done uh, before uh, we start that uh, because I would like to wait for the crops to dry out just a little bit uh, after the dew that comes on them overnight. Let's actually go up and have a look at the wheat field and see if the crops have dried out anything more since this morning. Uh, they've actually gotten a little bit wetter and that is probably because it is coming towards evening and uh, the moisture is condensing out of the air and uh, dampening the crop. Uh, so it's something that we will try to do in the middle of the day tomorrow. Uh, until then... I think that I am going to take this opportunity to say uh, thank you very much for tuning in and you have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube and I will see you next time. <laughs>